I think the joining up of health and social care, but more than that, other agencies beyond health and social care. So, so today we talked a lot about housing and the part it plays in people's lives. And I would push for further integration, thinking around uh, travel services and leisure services and other services that are part of citizens' everyday lives. Um, for the Commission to really address how to make those services more integrated is, is hugely complex. Um, but, but they seem very willing to tackle it and to ask the difficult questions. And I think that's the biggest one. I represent the College of Occupational Therapists, so that's 29,000 OTs who are trained to work both in health and social care. So OTs are often at the interface, but if they work in the health service, at the interface of people going home, and if they work in social care, they're looking at their service users going back into hospital. So I think the main issue there is about this barrier. I don't think it's about moving the barrier. I think we've got to make it more permeable because it causes huge frustrations and difficulties, not only to the service user and their carer, but also to the workforce who is trying to care for that person and make that journey in or out of, of healthcare smooth and not disruptive to their everyday lives. We talked a lot about funding today and I think in, within our group, and I know other groups may have reached different decisions, but there was a, there was a feeling that there is no more um, golden funding available, there's no golden bullet around funding and that probably what we have to do is think about where spend happens now and where it could be redistributed. Um, the point I will often make in, in that sort of discussion is that people don't live in hospital, they live at home. Um, and, and yet the majority of our resource goes into hospital-based care and quite often people are sitting in very expensive hospital beds with huge and marvellous technology around them but that actually isn't meeting their needs. So I think what we've got to do is, is think about where we spend now, think about the population who are in hospital, mainly older people, and see how we can get more of those services provided in the community um, and perhaps use more technology to make that a smoother and more efficient process. I had a very stimulating day. It's always good to step away from your desk and think about bigger pic picture issues. And, and I was involved in our submission, the college's submission to the Commission, so it's quite nice to then come back and talk about it more. Otherwise, you often respond to a consultation and that's it. You don't get involved in further discussion. So I think what, we, what we've engaged now is a dialogue. It feels as though the King's Fund and the Commission want to continue that dialogue. They've got quite a tight timeline to deliver things on. So we will wait now and, and watch what comes out and, and feedback if, if asked to do so again. The Commission is prepared to ask the unaskable, it's prepared to be brave, it's prepared to think very differently about how we might deliver health and social care and that comes as quite a refreshing change. Of course the political will to make that change will be harder to establish but it does genuinely feel as though the Commission is prepared to stick its head above the parapet and saying, so what if? <laughs>